Matt has spent several late evenings drawing out the new stern. It's fun observing Matt during these design sessions, during which he is basically dreaming up what Duracell will become. He gets quite animated during these sessions, with brow furrowing, lots of hmms, punctuated by exciting aha moments. So cool that you got these drawings from Roger Martin. Cookie, darling? Yeah. Oh, it's squishy. My name is Matt. Follow along as I turn Duracell, the legendary ocean racing sailboat, into a comfortable cruising home. So what were you spending so many evenings drawing? What exactly were you trying to figure out? So on the lines drawing that I have, the whole lines extend out kind of to infinity and what we need to do is find the shape of the hole where the transom has been cut off basically and so uh, i was just trying to find the shape of the of the hole there i was also designing the cockpit but now you have a sweet new tool to help you with the design right i do uh yeah i've been using pencil and paper and i've started using uh, a CAD program, a free CAD program to be able to draw the boat with, and Marie helped me figure out how to do it. I'm Marie. I'm friends of Matt and Yanis, and um, I worked as an engineer, mechanical engineer, for about five years and picked up some CAD skills that I saw could be useful to the Duracell project. So can you explain to us what is CAD? Uh, so CAD stands for Computer Aided Design and it is basically software that allows you to create 3D models of things um, and sort of visualize them and manipulate them digitally before you actually start hacking and slashing things in the real world or after, you know, it's, <laughs> it's your choice. <laughs> I basically took the plans for Duracell, the like, you know, huge pieces of paper with uh, all the lines of the boat drawn on them. And I took those lines that define the hull shape and I uh, sort of put them into CAD and digitized it and created a 3D model of the hull shape of Duracell um, that will aid with, uh, I don't know, messing around with the transom or maybe the keel or something like that. It's, it seems like a good thing to have. <laughs> yeah, Matt, can you elaborate more on why what Marie did was so useful? Yeah, it, there will be a few modifications I'm gonna make to the hull itself specifically the transom like she was saying and then also when we go to redesign the keel uh, the naval architect is going to want a CAD drawing so that they can kind of derive the keel shape that they want uh, from the whole shape so um, it's extremely helpful for us. The transom is so sloped that I need to find the whole shape in three different places as it goes aft. Can you explain more what you mean about finding the shape in three different places? I'm going to be installing two bulkheads and and the actual and a new transom basically onto the back of the boat. And so there's almost like 8 feet, 7 feet of hull missing from where the from where the whole slopes. I'm extending the hole up and if if I just put fiberglass up there it would be kind of flopping all over the place and there would be no fairness to there it would the whole shape would not be you know uniform with the rest of the boat and so those bulkheads are going to make the addition fair with the rest of the boat they're going to provide structure because the uh, side decks are going to be on top of those bulkheads so we, we're, we're going to sit and stand. And then the transom is the third part, and that's the new face of the back of the boat. So I'm changing the whole shape of the back of the boat. And so when you look at the back of the boat, it's going to look different, and that transom is going to be what you see 
that shape is going to be what you see once it's done. Drafting on CAD allows me to be more accurate. It also allows me to make changes more easily and to model different looks for the stern. Are you uh, catting or catting? Here are three different models I've designed for the stern. I'd love to know which you like best in the comments. So is this stern modification project like easy peasy lemon breezy? Or is this a more challenging project? Uh, it is definitely very challenging for me. Uh, I haven't done, I've, I've done something similar before, but I've never done one this big. There are a lot of complex compound curves coming together in one place that makes it very difficult. And I'm making it a little bit easier on myself by making the transom like flat, it's in one plane, but then meeting, it's got to meet up with the compound curves of the whole shape. So um, it's gonna be tough for sure. But a good challenge, right? A very good. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. This week was a lot of prep work to get ready to begin this transom modification. I had to cut off the sides of the cockpit. I had to cut a hole in the transom uh, this hole will become the swim step. I'll actually make it bigger. And I cut it to access the back side of the chain plates. And I had to remove the chain plate, which took a lot of time, but we are changing the boat from a single backstay to a split backstay. So I did eventually get this chain plate off. It took me like four hours to get it off. Um, I had to grind most of the bolts off that didn't unscrew. And then- Wait, were... you ground steel? Well, I took the cutting wheel to it and I cut them off. Oh. Yeah. And then, um, and then there was one more that was left over and I, and it was, it actually broke, but it was still like the head of it was still and part of it was still in the boat. And so I took a uh, torch and heated up a whole, like got it real hot and then it just popped out, so. So could have you have used the torch from the beginning without the four hours of labor? I don't know. I don't, I don't even want to think about it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll let you do it next time. <laughs> no, thanks. <laughs> Who's the expert here? And of course there was lots of sanding. Lots and lots of sanding.
So I wanted to give a short mast update. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Duracell did not come with a mast. So we've been looking for a mast that's about 80 feet long. And a few months ago, we had come across one. It was a carbon four spreader mast that was down in California off of a Ryko Pew 70 foot boat. It looked really good. It was a really great price. We went down to LA Major to check it out and we found that it did not have its spreaders. The spreaders had been stolen from the boatyard that the mast was at. I'm not seeing any spreaders. So we started to dig into it and either to have spreaders made, custom made, or if I was going to build them myself would have been both very expensive and or cost a, or take a lot of time for me to build four sets of spreaders and have the ends fabricated. The boat requires discontinuous rigging and so there's a lot of extra hardware that comes along with the with the with putting the mast in the boat. And so basically it was it turned out to be too expensive for us to put this mast together and get it to stand up in the boat. So we continued looking and um, another one came up. It is a, a, a off of a Andrew 70. It's a, a three spreader aluminum mast. And the nice thing about it is it comes with all the hardware. It comes with rod rigging and it fits Duracell very, very close. Uh, I would have to do very little adjustment to get the, the mast to stand up in the boat. And as long as everything passes inspection, I wouldn't I wouldn't necessarily have to replace any of the parts, including the rigging, the standing rigging. Uh, and so it looks really, really good. It's a great price. And so uh, we're really optimistic that it's the right mast for us. Evan, who has been helping me figure out this mast situation, is working with me. We're trying to make sure that the mast is going to, you know, stay standing in the boat, basically. So uh, we're still working towards it and um, we're pretty excited about this one. This is the last time I'm going to give kind of a, sh uh, um, tell the people that I'm looking for a mast. Uh, if you know of one, uh, we're looking for one that's around 80 feet. Doesn't matter if it's carbon or aluminum, uh, we're interested in anything that people uh, might know about. So. If you know of something, you can email me at uh, the Duracell Project at gmail.com. So. Hi from California. I'm here for the week visiting family. Um, we forgot to say something last week, and that is a big thank you to Maya and Aladino of Sailing Magic Carpet. They have a wonderful YouTube channel, and they came and checked out our project and did a whole episode on the Duracell Project. Uh, Maya did a beautiful job of telling our story and told a lot of things that we haven't really shared on our channel about our path to Duracell. So thank you so much, guys. Um, and a really big thank you to Sailing Melody. They also are refitting a boat, uh, a steel boat in the UK. And Melissa, Andy, and Jack are just delightful. Um, and they gave us a big shout out as well. So, you know, one of the really surprising and things about this whole YouTube adventure is we really are feeling like we've joined this boat refit community, which on YouTube, which includes the creators and the viewers. So that's it from me. And then without further ado, uh, here's our Patreon thank for the week. So uh, first, thank you to Barbara. She's an avid sailor and racer local to the area and also a fellow boat nerd. Uh, also local to the area is Vince. He's a retired aerospace engineer and avid racer and sailor and uh, has three boats. It's, and the one I like the most uh, that he sent a picture of is this one. And then uh, thank you to Nick. He's in the UK. Uh, he's uh, been a dinghy racer his whole life, has rebuilt dinghies, uh, and is currently preparing to uh, buy his own cruising sailboat. And lastly, thank you to Gary, Hans, Charles, Alex, and Nick. Uh, we didn't hear from them, but uh, we're very, very thankful for their support. So thank you to everybody who's been a patron. And if you're interested in joining our Patreon community, you can find us on patreon.com at uh, the Duracell Project. So thank you again.